looks like Tech Talk Wednesday, huh? Tech Talk Wednesday here at the Slip Angle. Ready. What are we talking about now? We're, we're going to talk about Project FD3S Mazda Mazda RX-7. I mean, like 580 horsepower, right? <sighs> There's a lot of good guesses out there if you were following on the Instagram post. None of them are right. <laughs> None of them are right. <laughs> uh, we're gonna go through this. And, and there's a lot to talk about yeah. here. Yep. All right, so quick, let's just give a quick recap here. Project FD3 SRX7 is a street ported single turbo 13B. Mm -hmm. TDO4S. Well, yes, now it's a TD, true TDO4S. Yep. Previously, TDO4, it was a TDO4S. Yep but with a T04E e 57 yep. trim compressor cover. Had boost issues, wouldn't boost more than 15, 16 pounds. Probably about 16 when we were able to squeeze out of it max on the dyno. Um, sorted fueling out and a whole bunch of other like little just like annoyances with the car. Got it back up and running this year. Got rid of my Racing Beat twin tip exhaust for a Aria Memia dolphin tail. JDM land exhaust I paid an arm and a leg for. Yeah, shipping. <laughs> $700 to ship that thing. Thanks a lot, Ari Amemia. Shafted me on the shipping. It's a gorgeous exhaust. I'll, it I'll, is, well, the dolphin tail is, looks proper. Yep. Big oval muffler, it sounds really good. I'm having Derek do a dual dolphin tail on mine. You are? Yes. Son of a bitch. <laughs> well, we're making, well, uh, let's. Yeah, well, yeah. all right, we're, we're, get yeah, we're getting sidetracked. All right. So we went to the dyno, new setup, boost in 20 PSI. So four, four, four and a half more pounds of boost. Mm -hmm. it, it creeps a little bit, but then, you know, by red line, it's still around that like 19 and a half, 20 PSI mark. Feels healthy on street. Feels very, very healthy on the street. So there's a, there's, there's a lot to talk about in this. All right, I'm gonna show you guys the before. We're gonna switch over to my laptop here in a second. I'm gonna, I'm gonna walk you through the dyno runs. I'm gonna explain what, where we were at, where we're at now, and some of the reasons why we're at now, and then where we're going from here. I thought I was done with this <laughs> fucking car, but. Project cars are never done. They're Quinn. never done. It's, it just. <laughs> All right, so, well, let's roll, the, let's roll the run real quick. Yep. I'm gonna drop that right now. Here it is on the dyno. What do you think? And we're back. <laughs> How was it? <laughs> Anyhow, all right, we're gonna switch over to my laptop starting right now. Actually, what's the, co it's command. Oh, Windows Alt R, right? Yep. All right, so right now. Oh boy, I don't have my, oh. Oh, it, it oh, did it. Son of a biscuit. Patience, Quinn. Patience, just like your project cars. All right, have a little all right patience. hold on. There we go, now. now. <laughs> Okay, so now here, there's a couple things here that's gonna make this, that's gonna make this complicated. I'm gonna open up the original dyno, which this was back from 2010. Oh, wait, wait, unhide it. Okay, now we're using STD smoothing and correction factor, and I'm only using this because this is like the happy medium, a quick, quick overview of correction factors. Uncorrected is what the car was making that day in those atmospheric conditions. If you look over here in the upper left, you will see that it was only 42 degrees this day, it was in the middle of winter, and we had the door open, it was freezing in there. So it was 42 degrees inside the dining room. Humidity was 22.2%, it was actually flurrying that day. That's dry, that's dry air, that's dry cold air, that's like ideal. I mean, I think it was a little bit humid because it was snowing, but it was, you know. Yeah, 22% humidity though, that's, yeah. that's like pretty low, right? I think that's like, well, it's snowing, so like yeah. there's some humidity, right? Anyways. I always quoted the car at 417 at the wheels. And the reason why I did that is because I was, and I forgot, because it was so long ago, um, that was the uncorrected number. It was actually 417 uncorrected, but STD was off. And this is a much newer version of WIMPEP 7. I don't know why torque is this high, but there was no way that the torque was 383 at the, at the wheels. I had the number 328 in my head. I think I have a screenshot of that. So something happened with the new versions of the software and the old versions of the software, which makes this really confusing, but Forget that torque number, 311 is more accurate for a street port of 13B when you have 396 at the wheels, okay? 
So I go, again, I go with STD because that is like kind of the middle correction factor. If you change it to SAE, which is like more the, the true universal horsepower, um, SE is like more the heartbreaker number when it comes to dyno jets. So I've been giving all my numbers previously to you guys on the channel as STD for like my 185 wheel horsepower ITB Miata, the 238 wheel horsepower AP1S2000. That was STD corrected dyno jet horsepower. So here is the old dynograph here. So with the upgraded compressor housing, the Which already- is a bigger compressor housing. So remember that for when we see the down low. Yes. So power. And, and here's the other thing. The exhaust that was on the car in 2010 was like a wide open three inch exhaust with literally no restriction whatsoever. And it wasn't your exhaust. It wasn't. Oh no. It was some like, um, what's that muffler company that I can't stand? Magnaflow. Oh. It was, when I say like, it was like air bleeding loud, like it was air bleeding oh, loud. Oh, wow. okay. I didn't so know it that. was just a three inch cap back, no resonator in the center section, which I've added a resonator since and a big wide open muffler that like didn't really muffle anything. It might as well have been straight piped at that point. I mean, it did a little bit, but like it was, it was too loud, too drony, too everything. Okay. The run that you guys just saw, oh, I did the wrong thing on hide. Here's the new numbers. Don't mind the squiggly stuff here at the end. Sometimes dinos do dumb shit and you get that on the graph. Um, but here's the game. We're at 421 and 317 torque. Mm -hmm. Couple things here we gotta make note of. We didn't retune for the dyno. So load on a, on a dyno jet is typically less than load on the street. So duty cycle and AFRs on the street were around 10.2 at max boost, at wide open and the upper RPMs. And duty cycles were 85 and under like extreme cases, like the highest they got was like 90, 92%, which is not good. You don't really That's wanna run high. injectors you over- You don't wanna go over 85. Over 85. Yep. Um, but on the dyno, load was less and the car got richer. So AFRs were 9.7, 9.8 to one, how about that duty cycle? And duty cycles were hitting 100% on the dyno. These injectors were not pulsing. No. They were just open. It's just open. Yep. Not good for power, not good for atomization. That was definitely a limiting factor. Um, but the reason why we didn't retune on the dyno is because another issue presented itself, and that was the REMEMIA exhaust. And the reason why, and this is how we know the exhaust was an issue, because upping boost, 21, 22 PSI, no change in power. Mm -hmm. We were changing everything. You were like, we, every change you made, it'd make, it'd make 420 horsepower. Yes. So that exhaust, and, and we're going to show you a clip here in one second, but that exhaust had so much pressure. Oh my God, I recorded behind it one. Coming out of the back of it that the turbo fan that was sitting behind the car to, to blow exhaust gases out of the garage, it, it was blowing it out of the way. So we're going to yep. drop that video real quick right now. Way too much exhaust pressure, way too much of a restriction. It's, it's bullshit and it's deceiving. Aria Mimia advertises that exhaust as a, as a three inch exhaust. I think in older versions of it, they used to have a removable baffle, mm -hmm. but mine has a baffle inside of it that you cannot remove and it looks like it's like two and a quarter. Yeah, it's a, it's a two and a quarter inch perforated pipe. So it's got this packing, bottleneck but... restrictor yeah. in there that is like really holding this setup back. Now, that exhaust I'm sure is fine for up to 15 pounds yep. and like maybe up to about 400 wheel horsepower max. Um, it's definitely holding the setup back, but mind you, the air fuel ratio being as rich as it was, duty cycle being as, as rich as it was, that's also hurting power. So I was massively surprised because I'm like, this car feels faster than 420 at the wheels on the street. Mm -hmm. I mean, it feels healthy. It probably is just it's, given, just given the, uh, the yeah. load on the car. If we were, if we, if we leaned it out, uh, it would probably be at least 430, maybe an even closer to 440 on the street. And that I would say feels more appropriate um, to how the car feels in terms, of, in terms of wheel horsepower. Now, if we look at the graph here, you can see we lost some low end. So this is, this is two parts. This is probably because of the more restrictive exhaust, but also the smaller compressor cover. So the blue line is, are the new run and the red lines are the old run. The old car had a much more free flowing exhaust. Um, 
that he when we tuned this, this was tuned for the dyno. It, so we determined that also the with the um, the racing beat exhaust that you had in the car, like in between the first time you dynoed and when we just did the dyno session, there may have been some smaller like like restrictions, but it was two of them in the muffler. Like there were there's so his tuner basically determined that even the the racing beat exhaust could have been more higher flowing than the than the Aria Memia it just because of the single. Well, he battle. said that the the, the twin tip. Aria Memia, like people have said that that's a little bit more, I'm sorry, twin tip racing beat. What are we talking about here? Yeah, the racing beat exhaust. He said you, yeah. it could be it could be even more restrictive than the racing beat it, exhaust yeah, that it, you had on there. It could be, but and he, he said something that the twin tip racing beat may be more restrictive than the single tip racing beat. Yeah. People have said like that it dynos a little bit less, but I mean, we're not talking, here's the thing guys, like I'm not trying to milk every horsepower out of this car because I don't care. I want the car to be enjoyable on the street and sound good. So like balancing that like exhaust note and drone and just like noise is not an easy thing. And even the REMME exhaust, like when you're beating on the car a lot and it gets hot, like it gets kind of a little boomy. bit boomy, yeah. you know? And it's like, it's borderline. I don't, it could be a little bit quieter, right? Where like the Racing Me twin tip that was on there is really quiet. Yeah. So kind of looking for a happy medium. Um, but that's it, that's, that's, at least it's some gain. And like, I will say this, the car feels noticeably faster. This is why I think it's more like around that 430 to 440 mark on the street when air fuels are a little bit leaner and duty cycle and the injectors isn't a hundred percent. Um, but it, you know, it feels really good on the street. Now where we're going to go with the car this winter mm -hmm. is it's going to get a three and a half inch exhaust from the turbo back. Cause I'm getting to the point where 20 PSI, is, is it just wants a bigger exhaust. There's just no way around it. So i um, gonna make a new downpipe. Yep. We're gonna, Racing Beat sells three and a half inch mufflers. So I'm gonna get two of their three and a half inch mufflers. I'm gonna make a dolphin tip. So I have the REMME exhaust as a template to match the, the what, do, what do I call it? The radius yeah. of the of the, Jupy of the tail. Yep. Yep. And then, uh, I'm gonna to try to do get away with two mufflers and one resonator. I think I can fit all three and hope that my ass doesn't bleed when I drive this thing on the street. Yeah. I mean, honestly, I'd rather have a car with 420 wheel horsepower that doesn't destroy my eardrums every single time I drive it than a car with 460 wheel horsepower that does. I agree. The only, the only problem with this now is that when I asked him, like, is it kind of unsafe that it's like a little bit of a cork in there? And he said, yeah, like it's not, it's holding heat into the engine. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's something that is going to have to get addressed this winter. I'm not looking forward to it. <laughs> I'll just say that right now, but it's something that we're going to do. Um, so that's it. That's, that's what the sum of everything that we sorted with Project Arc 7. I will, just to give some updates, the Holly fuel mat that's in there, I have yet to starve it. Yeah, yeah, that's a, that's a plus. Um, now I will say, like, I haven't really tried cornering too hard uh, below a third of a tank, but... You I, did that like toge run with, uh, with, with Tommy. Tommy yeah. yeah. And like, I was pushing the car and like to the point where I was getting like oversteer and stuff. And like, it was, it didn't, didn't skip a beat. Um, so that's really good. There's no bolts rattling around in the unibody anymore. Cause we fished those out. So that's also very good. And, um, and this winter it'll have a black interior and this winter is going to get, we're going to do the interior. I'm going to put a, a, a stereo back in it. I have all the speakers and sound deadening and all that stuff over there. And I'm not doing like, a system. It's just going to be four speakers and, and a touchscreen head unit so I can have a radio and just try to enjoy it a little bit more when I drive it on the street. Um, another thing that we did while we're there, so I'm just going to kind of jump into this real quick. Let me hide these graphs, is we dynoed my Z4M. Yeah, we got a baseline for that. We got a baseline because next year, which we was going to do it this year until the, the allocation for the GR Super came through, um, but I'm going to do bolt-ons and a carbon air box. So let those ITBs on that S54 sing. But I wanted a baseline for where my car is. And they're rated at 330 crank horsepower. 333. 330 for the Z4. Oh, because that's of the tighter this, exhaust the routing. The M3. Yeah, they, they, they uh. demerit the Z4M by three hearse purse. Um, so my car's bone stock. Engine wise, it has a little bit of suspension instead of wheels, but um, everything else on the car is stock. So this was a true uh, baseline and here it is. 
did <laughs> well. <laughs> Wait a minute. What did I do here? That's that's Matthew's exoset. That's the exoset. Sorry. Oh, we're, they're going to talk about Son that. Son of a biscuit. I'm really slacking here tonight on this. Now it's recording. Look at that. Sorry about the technical difficulty, guys. I'm not sure what happened there. But anyhow, um, here's the Z4M. Did 296. Yeah. Stock. And 245 torques. That's a that's great. That's a great power band. I'm stoked for that. Yeah. I Look I would torque I, curve. To, like there's not even a curve. It's just a flat line. Yeah. I thought it was gonna. Be, I literally thought it was gonna do like 280. So there's four cats in that car. Oh my god. Man. I'm hoping that getting rid of them, but keeping the stock X pipe and stock mufflers to not make that thing like terribly obnoxious, I can get that up to like 320 to 330 wheel. Yeah. I think that'd be a really fun. Just nice, like easy, drivable package, and sound good too with the carbon airbox. Being able to hear the the ITBs yeah. more. Um, we're not going to go too much into details on this because I just want to show it as a fun thing. But s next year, um, that's going to be on the list for uh, for project cars. We're gonna we're gonna do bolt on mods, and we got a, a good baseline on it to see where it goes. And you know, do we want to show Exoset, or do you want to just wait to the for the video? We we're gonna do a separate video for that. I know, that's why I'm asking. Yeah, yeah. All right, we also dyno Project Exoset, but we're gonna show you that in a different video. So, I think that's it. Yeah, that's it for that one. Yeah, oh, and then I guess, you know, one more thing, the run conditions for that day. Oh, it was much warmer. It was much warmer. Yeah. So it was uh, 68 degrees. And actually more humid too, 58% yeah. humidity. 58% humidity. So you got to take that into consideration too. Yeah. And then like the correction vectors, like I think that they're not as accurate when the conditions are more extreme too. So that's just another thing to keep, keep in mind. But this is the way to do it really. A dyno is just more tool to measure gains. Yeah. Right. The only baseline I have for this is that it, it seemed like most, most of these do around 280 at the wheels yep. um, stock, but that's in M3s. Yeah. You know, mine's fairly low mileage Z4M, and it has all the latest revisions that the S54 got. So maybe it was a little, there's a little magic in that sauce. I don't know. That's the most up, most current S54, right? Yeah. Yeah. And I think if I, I have to come out of here to change the correction factor just for ha ha's real quick, right? If we change it to SAE, which is the heartbreaker number, uh, I still think it was like 290, 288. Oh, that's good. So even that's if real we, good, yeah, I'm ha I was really surprised and happy with the with the Z4M first look at stop. Your, look at your torque; it doesn't dip below two. It's in that that you know that whole section that's between two hundred and two hundred fifty foot pounds of torque. Yeah, the entire rev range. That's cool. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we'll have a, we'll have a fun project for that next year. We got GR Super on the way, and Exosets running. Yeah. Oh. It's running. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, yeah, you got to. We'll talk about that in the next oh, yeah. video. <laughs> I forgot. I freaking forgot about that. Well, it was running. It was. But yeah. it'll be running again. Don't worry. Yeah. All right. So that's it for this one, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. Give us a like and a subscribe if you like this sort of content. It really helps us. And uh, tell your friends. Do you have anything else? Stay in school, kids. No. Oh. <laughs> All right. Cut. <laughs> Fuck school. Cut. Good night. <laughs> Good night.